Uh, good morning. It is 8.30. Okay. Had to get up early for this one. And where are we? We're at Wild Turkey Distilling. Be good. We've never been here. Um, I could say that about a lot of places here, but um, I'm excited about this one. And the drive was gorgeous. Pretty, pretty area out here. The country is amazing, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, all Turkey, lots of history here. So we can't wait to see the tour and, and bring start, you along. Start our day off with a little bourbon. Yeah. The Wild Turkey brand debuted in 1942. In 1954, Jimmy Russell started as Master Distiller. Wild Turkey got its name when one of the distillery higher-ups would bring his good stuff turkey hunting, and his buddies started asking for some of that Wild Turkey whiskey. The brand was made from bourbon distilled at many plants likely Bernheim, Barton, Bean, and Shinley. Newly renovated and state-of-the-art, Wild Turkey offers three new indoor and outdoor bars, seating areas, and a new retail experience. Good morning, everyone. Welcome Here we to go. the Jimmy Russell Wild Turkey Experience. We can't say we're new anymore. We're bumping up against two months. We have reopened May the 1st. Uh, my name's Denisa. We're going to spend about an hour together enjoying this iconic campus. We're going to see old and new part of the campus, which is pretty, pretty fun to do. We're on, the, we're on the short side. <laughs> well, I'm not surprised. delivered here to the distillery. Oh, he's getting ready to drop off, baby. Uh, high quality grains delivered here. Uh, we use non-GMO grain. You're not, uh, you're gonna hear me say this a lot. It's kind of the way we always did it. Jimmy Russell uh, doesn't like to change things much. So when he started in uh, 1954, master distiller in 1967, genetically modified things did not exist. So he's just keeping it real, doing it the same way he always uh, did it. What's inside of these bins are corn, rye, and malted barley. And what you see here represents just one week's worth of production. They source their corn locally, about 30 minutes away. But the rye actually comes from Poland, and it's a very high-quality, non-GMO grain. The malted barley comes already malted and they process everything with a hammer mill. You can process things by hammering or rolling. They prefer hammering as it makes a slightly more coarse grain that they use. There's no really right or wrong way to do it. It's just their preference. They have two 15,000 gallon cookers and the process with these takes about three to four hours. It converts the grains to soluble sugars so it can feed the yeast, which then in turn makes the alcohol. They cook the corn first, it's the most robust, and it's cooked to right below boiling for about 20 minutes, and they let it naturally cool. The most delicate grain, the rye, is the second added, and then they add the malted barley. Then in the fermenter go the cooked grains, 600 gallons of yeast and 2600 gallons of back set 
which is the liquid left off the still. It's basically water. They use the back set because of the acidic pH. All of this produces about 30,000 gallons a day or 560 barrels per day. They are currently aging 800,000 barrels at Wild Turkey. Production is basically science. This whole process is monitored and controlled now by computer systems that monitor temperatures and alcohol content, yeast efficiency, and all that good stuff from end to end. Controlled by these guys in here. You can see how stressed out they are working in there. Um, Jimmy wasn't a fan of automation when this first rolled in here, but when he saw the high quality of distillate from this automated process where it would a couple of guys tasted this to see if it went right, um, he's a fan now. There are 14,000 barrels in this warehouse. They are all aged in white oak barrels with a level four char. And apparently there's a 20 year old barrel in here that's even a mystery to our tour guide. Jimmy thinks more than 12 years in a barrel is a waste of time. Um, I would disagree a bit, so it is, but not in public. And his sons would disagree a bit, but I do, his son and grandson, I mean, would disagree a bit. They put these barrels in, and every two years they do what's called an anniversary sampling. They do it by lot. You saw that lot. It's odd that they left one, that's freaking me out. It's odd that they left one 20 year old barrel just hanging there by itself, because that was a lot. Usually they pull them off. Um, but they're going to sample that and decide what it's going to be when it grows up. Um, master distillers, if you think about a weird job, they are putting stuff in a warehouse that will come out after they're gone. Wow. Right? Wow. See? They don't know how it's going to turn out. Yeah. I mean, some of these master distillers are young, some are not. Basically, the stuff that's coming up, going into that barrel today, we will not look at for six, well, we'll sample it, but we won't open that barrel for six years. We're going to be tasting from your left to the right, left mm -hmm. to the right. Um, this is in the bachelor party, so don't shoot you know, all four. four <laughs> so um, first thing we're going to try is 86 proof. Um, it's Long Branch. I'll tell you about it while you're sipping it. Uh, you guys know all the color and most of the 50% of the flavor comes from that barrel. So pick your Long Branch up, kind of examine it a little bit. Yeah, we're going left to right. So, and kind of swirl it around a bit. You see people doing that for real. They're kind of opening it up a bit. Um, Long Branch, story about this that you're drinking there, 86 proof. Um, a young actor back in the day named Matthew McConaughey wanted to try his hand at making uh, yeah. bourbon. The fact that it's 86 proof, which is pretty low for us, we're not known for that, doesn't surprise me. He's a tequila guy, which is 80 proof. So um, 86 proof, eight year old wild turkey. Um, the difference <coughs> is it is refined in mesquite charcoal. Russell's 10, the whole Russell's line has a really cool story. It's 90 proof. Small batch, the youngest barrel that you're is in this bottle is 10 years old, up to 12, because that's what Jimmy likes. 
So the average age on Russell's tan is right at 11 years old. You will not find a better bourbon on the market with that age statement for under $50. This new visitor center and retail space is quite impressive. So for Jim and myself, I want to say thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed this please do come back, think about liking and subscribing, and we will see you out there. Bye.